Hi, this is Matt from Test and Tag Training. Today, we're going to show you how to test a surge protected power board. Surge protected power boards contain MOVs and or EMI filtering, which are designed to stop any surge of voltage damaging sensitive electronic equipment. Some surge protected power boards are tested differently based on the tester used. However, today, we'll show you a range of testers and how they need to be set to test an MOV protected power board. If we are to test this power board the standard way, you will see that the test will fail. The reason for this is that the insulation resistance test at 500 volts DC causes the MOV to react and suppress the voltage spike, causing the appliance tester to fail the test. The Matrell testers can be programmed in many ways, and if you do not have the surge protected simple test, you can use the shortcut version instead. In the shortcut menu, select Multibox 166. The sequence of this test will include an earth bond, an insulation resistance, and a polarity. You'll notice that the insulation resistance is set to 250 volts. When testing a power board, each socket must be tested individually. Using the Wavecom testers, we will need to set the unit to 250 volts by pressing the Enter and F2 keys together. Select Enter again, and then F3. Now you can perform the standard extension lead test. In the case of the Seawood appliance testers, you will require to conduct an earth leakage test as you cannot turn the insulation resistance test down to 250 volts. Some power boards have MOV and EMI filtering together, which means that the standard insulation resistance test will fail. In this case, the class 1 leakage test shall be performed. Thanks for watching our video on testing surge protected power boards. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below or send us an email. Thanks.